This will be our second video in the Flexible Budget Overhead Variances series, and we're going to be specifically talking about fixed overhead variances. Now, in some ways, the fixed overhead variance calculations are a little bit easier than the others, and in some ways, it's a little bit different. So let's start by drawing our chart like we have been, and again, we're using a three-peg system right now. So the first peg for fixed overhead variances will be the actual fixed overhead. The second peg will be our budgeted fixed overhead. And the last peg will be very similar to the others, standard quantity times standard price. Now one thing I do want to point out about fixed overhead is the budgeted number, this number right here. This number is going to be based on something called a denominator level or you could see expected capacity or a normal volume. So this budgeted fixed overhead is going to be based on some number and they're going to call it a denominator level, expected capacity, or normal volume. So that's a little bit different from our others, but just keep these terms in mind. And if you see any of these three terms, this is the only place in our charts for variance analysis that you will use this number, this one peg, the budgeted fixed overhead peg. So let's use our GQ clothing example to calculate our fixed overhead variances. So once again, we're going to start by drawing our chart as we normally would and labeling everything. So the first peg is actual fixed cost. The second peg will be budgeted fixed cost. And the last peg will be the allocated fixed cost or standard quantity times standard price. Okay, so let's look for these numbers and see if we can fill this information in. So the first one is actual fixed cost. And if we look in the problem, they tell us that our actual fixed cost are $63,916. Now we want to look for our budgeted cost. And they tell us those as well. Budgeted fixed cost are $62,400. So let's go ahead and calculate the first fixed cost variance, which similarly to variable is a spending variance. So that's the difference in pegs one and two. So when you do that mathematically, you find a spending variance of $1,516. And actual costs are higher than budgeted. Not a good thing, so that will be an unfavorable variance. And then we can move to our third peg over here. Well, in the third peg, we have standard price and we have standard quantity. So let's talk about standard quantity first. So again, the definition, what should have happened at the actual level of production. Well, if we look at the story, the actual level of production, they tell us, is the same as before, 1,080 suits. So what should have happened at actual level of production is we should have used four labor hours per suit. So if you notice, the standard quantity for variable overhead that we did before is the same as standard quantity for fixed overhead. And that will always be the case because the cost driver is the same. It's still direct labor hours for overhead. Now standard price, this actually wasn't given to us in this story. Uh, and we're actually going to have to calculate that somehow. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back over here to our budgeted information and see how we actually got that number. So we know that the budgeted information, we budgeted that we would do 1,040 suits and that each, four, each suit was budgeted to take four hours. So if each suit is budgeted to take four hours, then that's the budgeted quantity and the budgeted or standard price would be the price we needed to do to get to that 62400 
So when we calculate this number, you should find a $15 standard or budgeted price. And we can simply move that to our third peg. And when you do the math, you find that the standard or allocated cost is $64,800. So the difference in pegs two and three is $2,400. We call this a production volume variance. And we have to determine if it's unfavorable or favorable. So the, the idea here is production level. This is our key, is production. So we want to focus on production. Did we produce more than we thought or less than we thought? That is the idea. So when you look here, we thought we would produce 1,040 and we actually produced 1,080. So the production is higher than we thought it would be or budgeted it to be. So this is favorable. Now with, flip, with um, fixed overhead, you don't have a flexible budget variance. Well, you do, it's just you don't, you don't add things together to get it. This, the spending variance, is also the flexible budget variance. So they are the same thing in this case. They are equivalent. So let's look at the story down here like we, do it, like we did with variable. The production volume variance arises because the actual production of suits is higher, in this case, than the budgeted production. Therefore, it's favorable. The results in, or this results in over allocated fixed overhead. So what happens is we over allocate it. This is our allocated overhead right here, 64,800. So another way you could look at that is when we fix that over allocated problem, our cost will go down and net income will go up. Because right now net income is understated because we over allocated our cost. GQ may want to consider the following for this type of production volume variance. Is the market increasing? So is the demand for our product increasing? Is our market share increasing? So is, is our product differentiated in some way? So our product is, is higher demand? And will we need to increase our capacity so we can meet this higher demand?